a tough time for Vancouver to lose two of their starting players, including their starting keeper, if Thomas is to come out. Sean Melvin's played about half the time, though. I think they've both got three starts coming into okay. this match. Uh, yes, indeed, they do. Three starts apiece before today. Um, you can see Melvin's already up getting loose over on the sideline. I'd like to remind you that Nike is a proud sponsor of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike Soccer information. Again, at Nike Soccer, just like you would expect it on Twitter. Get all the latest Nike Soccer information. USL, MSL, proud sponsors throughout the leagues. And the Premier Development League, of course. We talked a little bit earlier about Brad Evans, the goal scorer in the... Uh, U.S. national team in stoppage time to win that match, get the three points. He played for the Orange County Blue Star in the PDL. And uh, Graham Zussi, who was also on the roster for the national team today, he plays now for Kansas City, of course, and he played in the PDL for the Central Florida Blaze. Nice to see products of this league having an effect at the national team level. Hope to see them in Brazil next summer. Soccer is alive and well in the United States of America. The way that the Rage has swept across. Of course, you can't find a field on a Saturday afternoon in pretty much any major metropolitan area around the nation without it full of soccer players. And a counterattack opportunity now for the Whitecaps as on the ball is Cousins. Physical play by Zach Hamer to separate him from the ball, and it's cleared away. An opportunity, fans, to remind you that today's Seawolves broadcast is sponsored by Waterfront Coffee Company, conveniently located at 101 Main Street next to the Edmonds Ferry Terminal and Brackett's Landing Beach. As the shot goes over the bar, Waterfront Coffee Company features Italian-style coffee and pastries, local organic lunch items including panini, soup, and piroshki, plus everyone's favorite, Snoqualmie ice cream. Visit them online at waterfrontcoffeeco.com, waterfrontcoffeeco.com. 2-1 the score here in the 59th minute of play at Edmonds District Stadium. Thanks for being along. We hope you'll join us again. Rogers stepping in at keeper as Ryan Herman Ryan departs Herman, the match yeah, at halftime. That, that uh, escaped us, I think, both as they came out of the tunnel it to did. start the second half. No fourth official, of course, here in the Premier Development League. They don't hold up the convenient little substitution board at halftime. I it's like that. Tell us all up here who's entered the match. So we have to rely on the great Mike Allende to let us know. We appreciate everything he does. Nick Hamer on the ball now. Nice little slide out looking for his brother, but it ends up instead with Hammond. Hammond into the area. Tries to slide a shot through, but Thomas is up to the challenge, and he smothers it, and he'll roll it out onto the wing. Thomas bounced up nicely after hitting the deck on the score earlier. <laughs> We're in the 60th minute here in Edmonds, Washington. Vancouver trails this after leading it early. North Sound Seawolves took the lead in the 56th minute on a beautiful sliding goal by Nick Hamer. It's the first lead they've had here at Edmonds Stadium, but of course this is only their second home match of the year, Keith. And that bodes well when you look at who they're playing. Of course they play... Victoria twice, they play the Pumas twice, I believe, and, and uh, if you get them here at home, especially those that are ahead of you with any uh, chance at that 1-2-3 spot, you want to knock those guys down. There's Cousins a shot. turns in the box, nicely blocked down by the substitute Bartels, and it looks like Suazo will be able to clear. 60 minutes gone by here in the match, third of the way through the second half. Another opportunity for Cousins out onto the wing now for Essa. As to the speedster, into the box, a shot saved by the goalkeeper, Rogers, and the rebound is cleared out toward the touchline. Nice reaction by the goalkeeper, Rogers. Still in play. Vancouver gets it back. They try and get it to lock in, but it goes out of play, and it will be a corner kick now. Thomas was the man that had the, the opportunity to mark Cousins underneath, and after the rebound, it was Th Thomas with the quick reaction to clear that ball. Well done by... Mr. Thomas has been very active in defense already so far. Look Vancouver at with eight shots entering that first half. And we get to the stats here after the attack is over. Ball bounces clear of danger now. Nick Hamer, nice job to slide it out toward the midfield. Dismuke will chase it down. He's got an opportunity, but I don't think he'll be able to get around the defender. 
This is Hundal, the forward, and that Dismuke chases the ball into the possession of goalkeeper Thomas, but he's able to clear it back into the midfield again. Frantic action here as we play in the 62nd minute. Edmonds Stadium, 2-1 to one the score. North Sound Seawolves with the lead. In the midfield, it's Locken. Tries to get it out for Cousins on the wing, and is it a throw-in or a foul? It's a throw-in throw for in. the White Caps. I thought I heard a whistle, but I guess I made that up. Taken away by Thomas again. Active in all phases of the match. He's had a couple of runs down the wing too, but the pass this time is picked off by Vancouver, and they'll look to push forward. Great idea at the through ball. I could see exactly what he was trying to do there. Just happened to have a defender step up who actually read that ball before the pass was made and step up into the gap and make the interception. But... A nice attempt. He had two men, one running on the far side, one on the near. Seawolves is playing very crisp in their possessions right now. The ball sent long from goalkeeper Rogers to goalkeeper Thomas, and he rolls it out. Vancouver will try and play some hold-up ball. Now Thomas has his arm wrapped around Cousins out on that wing. Nothing is, is called, and they will play it back play on. into the defense. The lights are on in Edmonds. 63rd minute here. 2-1 lead for the North Sound Seawolves. A couple of goals from the midfield. One by, excuse me, one from the forward Ham and the other from the midfielder Hamer who had been a defender until recently. Nice for him to get on the scoreboard. Nice touch from Juti, but he can't control it and it will bounce back out into the midfield. The Smuke has a chance to try and play it forward. Drops it off for Hamer, intentionally or otherwise. Nick Hamer has Ballou, has the Smuke sliding through, but well defended by Bossy. He's been a pest all day. He's been a pest and at the absolute perfect times. That was another through ball opportunity that just missed. You have definitely have set up men running on the outside. And Bossy again in the right place at the right time and a foul given against North Sound. They're going to say that Danny Gavin impeded his opponent. A quick restart out on the wing. This is uh, excuse me, this is Hundal on the left wing. Plays it into the box. Back heeled by Cousins, but nobody's there. The goal was wide open. Nicely played by Cousins, but nobody to handle the ball. And it will end up as a throw-in for the Seawolves. We're in the 64th minute here at Edmonds Stadium. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Nathan Murphy with Keith Neely on a beautiful evening in Edmonds, Washington. The Seawolves lead it by a score of 2-1. to one. And they will throw it deep out of their own end. Suazo, Dismuke heads it forward. And it bounces near the halfway line. It'll be handled there by Clement. Vancouver defender. Gets it to Fahrenhorst on the right side. Sliding forward has Essa there, the speedster. Essa with the cross. Good marking by North Sound. And the ball's sent away. But not far enough. A shot opportunity for Locken, but he sent it over the bar. That's about as good a shot opportunity as Vancouver's had in the half. With uh, mostly playing on defense. They seem to have been content with the 1-1 score coming out of the halftime. And uh, now they're going to have to get a little more aggressive. And it's interesting. That's not what we saw in the first half not of the at all. head. Uh, and certainly when the game is tied, you would expect a team with what we were told about their style of play to push it a little harder. But they've, they've seemed to sit back a little bit as the goal kick is sent into contention in the midfield. Headed forward by Thomas. And Zach Hamer can't quite control it. And again, this is Hundal. Excuse me. This is Juti. The substitute came on for Abdullah after he went down with an injury on the near side of the field. As the ball will be bundled out of play. A little bit of contact there, but they say it came off of Rogers. And Rogers was playing the timing there, trying to make, make the defender, Cousins, have to, actually pl playing defender, have to come in and make the contact. Cousins wanted a foul there, none given, and the ball is cleared out of danger by Suazo. And it will be another throw in about 20 yards into the north sound half of the field. We're in the 66th minute here at Edmonds Stadium. Two to one, your score. North Sound leads this one. Having trouble corralling the balls here with the ball, ball managers. Fans will take this chance to remind you that Nike is a proud sponsor of the United Soccer Leagues. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all of the latest Nike soccer Information. Suazo again taking the chance to clear the ball. 
And now contesting for it on the back line is Gavin, the midfielder, and does a nice job freeing the ball up. Hamer comes in and clears it, but a little bit more defensive work to do here for the Seawolves as it's not out of their own half. Vancouver, just as we say they're not pressing it too hard, starts to take a little bit of initiative and make the uh, Seawolves do a little work. Should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> the broadcaster's jinx. I didn't That's know how exactly real it was right. yeah, until it I took happens. this gig. Brady Ballou looking for excuse me, Braxton Griffin. Griffin looking for it. And gets ahead on it, but can't keep possession and Fahrenhorst the defender will push forward now has a man in the middle this is Cousins beautiful ball tries to back heel it but can't do it he overran that a little bit and North Sound will get it back played to the goalkeeper Rogers he'll send it long spinning floating ball up in the air a little bit of gusting winds out there this evening but I don't know how much they're coming into play as an offside flag goes up on the near side once again Essa had come back from an offside position and run around for a couple moments before being flagged. And now we've got, ah, we've got two balls on the field. The referee had held up play. And now we'll go Makes back to the restart. Makes it a little more difficult for defenders uh, don't with think, the multi-ball situation. Don't think you're supposed to have to play that way. Suazo will take the offside free kick for Dismuke. <laughs> nice touch, has an opportunity to go around Fahrenhorst, but can't quite do it. Well defended. And Vancouver can clear. Farrenhorst is a big, strong guy, and he definitely makes that known. Not afraid to mix things up, get a body on somebody. Perhaps a slight tug when he needs it. Essa's pass is picked off by the Seawolves, but they can't control it. It's contested in the midfield and pops out of play over the touchline for a Whitecaps throw-in. 68 minutes left, or gone by in the match, excuse me, just about... 20 remaining or so as we play here in Edmonds. The ball is slid through by Locken out of the midfield, but it's handled easily by Rogers. The scoring, most of the scoring for the North Sound team has come on that right-hand side away from Farrenhorst, who is 6'1", 190 pounds. Of course, Nick Hamer sliding goal came in on that right hand side and again the right hand side was the modus operandi for that set piece goal we've talked about off the foot of Hammond Farrenhorst and Bossy both being annoying to the uh, to the North Sound forwards and they're both playing on that left side Farrenhorst played at Western Trinity University in Canada Bossy actually played for Canada in the under 20 World Cup back in 2011 and he's trained in England with a couple of different sides and uh, played with the uh, Whitecaps residency team through his uh, what we would consider a high school career. As the ball bounces around a little bit in North Sound's box but is eventually cleared away but not far as taking it as Juti tries to slide it through for Cousins. Back to Juti. He's onside. Has a cross but nobody there. Well marked again by North Sound. And a great opportunity missed by the Vancouver Whitecaps to try to even this match at, at two apiece. They had Two men flying down that left-hand side, and the minute that Juti was able to spring free with the cross, he dove two men into the box, and it just went wide. Opportunity wasted. We're going to have a substitution here. The newly arrived Danny Gavin is going to leave the match, trying to see who's going to enter for him. Ah, uh, this is the Frenchman I do. He is playing in his first match with the Seawolves, just arrived with the club this week. He will come in in the midfield in relief of Gavin. So a good first effort from Gavin as a Seawolf, and now a first appearance for the Frenchman as he enters the match here in the 70th minute. Whitecaps feeling the pressure a little bit now to try to get the equalizer. 2-1 to one the score. Been throwing an extra man forward into the attack, only... Three men in defense now. Perhaps an opportunity to take advantage on a counterattack, but right now it's the speedster Essa on the ball. Into Locken uh, in the circle on top of the box, tries to turn with it but can't keep it, and it's well cleared again by Thomas. Really, really nice match from him so far, Keith. And it may be uh, a little reactionary because of the way that North Sound is packing things in up by a goal now in the 71st minute. Devin Thomas, a senior at Seattle University, grew up in Puyallup, 
Played for the Seawolves last year in 2012. He's also played at Highline Community College here in the Puget Sound area. On the ball is Suazo. Gives for Dismuke. Tries to slide it back heel over to Hamer, but Hamer can't control it. A long shot is handled easily by Rogers. Nice toss onto the right and an opportunity here maybe for North Sound. A couple of nice touches to control it. As forward they push, but they can't keep control of it, and it will go out for a Seawolves throw in. Just, again, a communications breakdown. Both of them thought the other one was going to take possession of the ball, and both of them went on the uh, offensive side trying to get a clear so that they could get a, maybe perhaps a through ball, and, and the end result was nobody had the, the ball, and uh, it was turned over. A couple of nice touches, though, by Hammond to move the ball forward. This time, though, he can't keep it in play. And it bounces across the touch line for a Whitecaps throw in. 73rd minute now. About 18 plus a little bit of stoppage time as the Whitecaps have an opportunity here on the counter. With the ball is Hundal. Already has one goal into the middle for Cousins. Rogers had come out to try and challenge, but now he's back on his line as the ball bounces for Lockin. Challenge there and a foul is going to be called against the Seawolves. This is Suazo, and he gives up a dangerous free kick here about 25 yards from goal right in the center. This isn't an opportunity for the Whitecaps. I don't know what is. You've got a different keeper, Rogers, in now. A bit smaller than the starter, Herman. So the Whitecaps will line up over the ball. The wall, it's kind of easy to see where they should go with the football markings out here on the field. They're precisely 10 yards away. <laughs> Three white caps standing over it. Now Vizantine walks away, and it's going to be taken straight into the wall by Clement, the defender. Had some weight behind it, but he can't get it to frame. But the white caps control. Sliding back, challenging for it now, and Dismuke will take possession and an opportunity to counter. Long ball up, looking for Hammond, but it doesn't get there. Nice try by Dismuke, and now the white caps will push back the other way. Hundal tries to get it into the center. And a shot and a goal! The equalizing goal from Lockin. A counter by the Seawolves, a counter by the Whitecaps, and just like that, we're tied at two in the 74th. What a play. Lockin, the midfielder, Harry Lockin, plays with the UBC Thunderbirds in Vancouver, made a nice run down the center. The ball came in, and he didn't miss. He put it right into the upper 90 to tie the match. Mistake on the counter is what set up the counter for the Vancouver Whitecaps, and you have to make sure that when it's your time to push forward, you can get, get it done. And in that case, it, the tide turned and the momentum shifted so fast that the defense of the Whitecaps, or excuse me, the North Sound was not able to recover, and a goal. We've talked about man marking all night, Keith, and it, it broke down there. So we have a tied match. It's anybody's game again with about 15 minutes and change to go. 2-2 Two -two the score here at Edmonds. The lights are on. The sun is down. It's cooling off a little bit now, about 55, 50 degrees, something in that neighborhood. Three points on the win. We'll move the North Sound Seawolves over the crossfire. And you get another win on top of that. It moves you right into the center of the table and gives you a chance at those top three in a playoff spot. And that's the goal of the Seawolves team. But Vancouver needs those points also. They're currently tied with the Sounders under 23s as we have a foul here against Nick Hamer. They're tied with nine points for that third and final playoff spot. And I think we're going to have a caution here as Nick Hamer thought that the ball had already been played live, but uh, the referee disagreed. He will be shown the yellow card for delaying the restart. Braxton Griffin putting up a bit of a fight. Trying to argue his case. So a caution for Nick Hamer here in the 75th minute. I believe that's his first yellow card of the season. It, I stand corrected. He had one earlier, I believe, against Victoria. First booking for the Seawolves tonight, of course. Fahrenhorst went into the book in the 18th for the uh, hard challenge against the uh, Seawolves forward. Another opportunity here for the goal scorer, Lockin but he can't control it. It will go over the goal line, and it will be a goal kick. We've played 76 minutes here. We're tied at two. Equalizing goal from Lockin, 
as we'll take this chance to remind you that uslnation.com is the league's official online video channel. Check out more than 200 games, including this one and all Seawolves home games on USL Nation in 2013. And we're glad you've all joined us here on USL Nation tonight for this match. We're tied at two here in the 77th minute. Nathan Murphy, Keith Neely from Edmonds Stadium in Edmonds, Washington. Edmonds Woodway High School. Cousins on the ball, slides it ahead. He's on side, locking, cuts it back, and it was behind Hundal. They had a go-ahead goal there, and they had another opportunity, but Hundal's header is corralled by Rogers. Dangerous times, dangerous living for the Seawolves, but they escape for the moment. As with it is Suazo. You get enough of those chances that Vancouver is going to make good on them. So you're going to have to either get your own goal, and here's an opportunity right now. Griffin slides it out for the newly entered Durant. Durant can't quite corral it, and it will go over the touchline again. Durant entering at the last stoppage of play. It took a little while, but Vancouver suddenly playing with much more urgency than we saw earlier in the half. And that's exactly what the Seawolves are going to have to master now, is throw a little bit of urgency behind this match. Don't just be content with taking counters, but actually put men forward, get those nice crisp passes that set up Nick Hamer in that last uh, goal that was scored. You do that again, you control the possession as well as they did there, you're going to have opportunities. And I think Ed Moore and his staff know that as a, an opportunity here for Griffin, has a chance to cross it. Nobody on the other end chasing it down for North Sound is going to be I do the Frenchman. He tries to cross it. It's headed away and Griffin will chase it down now and it'll go out for a throw in. We were talking about how much they need these three points, Keith, and you've got to assume that the Seawolves don't want the one. That's not going to do it's much not for do them. Enough. You need no. a win. So they, they've got to push forward here. As though they were behind, a, tr a draw doesn't do them a whole lot of good. You draw the rest of the, uh, the rest of the season, every game, it does not give you enough to get into the playoffs. You're going to have to start stringing two, three games together. Uh, certainly a draw in there at times will be just fine, but if you can muster seven, eight points in a period of three games, you're going to be up at the top of the table. And especially at home, you need to win these games. Win at home, draw on the road is going to get you a lot of success. A nice sliding play to put it out by, guess who, Dylan Thomas. Thomas has just been everything in the defense. He and Suazo has just anchored those, those cuts on the wide side. The, the wingers. Sent away again by Thomas. Trying to hold it in the midfielder here as Hamer gets it to Idude. Now out for Nick Hamer. Has it taken away and sliding it ahead for Locke and an opportunity again for Vancouver to counter. Mm -hmm. Nick Hamer gets back. Nicely done. Is it going to be a call. foul or a throw in? It's going to be a foul. And Nick Hamer has to be careful here already on a yellow card. The last thing you want here is, is uh, a player as important as Hamer sent off, suspended, and have to play down for these crucial final 10 minutes. Especially with the energy that Hamer brings. He, he's the lifeblood right now. And he is right in that center, that midfield. Everything is going through him. He's the one that has the little extra push that the Seawolves are going to need the remainder of this game. Free kick comes into the area, and it bounces out onto the left side. An attempt to play it back into the center, but Judy can't control it, and it will go out for a goal kick. We'll have a substitution here, fans, but first we'll take this opportunity to remind you that North Sound Seawolves soccer is brought to you by Brian Ford and Everett. Brian Ford offers the best deal on every car, every day. Their non-commissioned sales staff are committed to providing you with a buying experience that can't be beat, and it's all backed by a 72-hour return policy. Brian Ford, easy, clear, and one low price. Visit them online, folks, at brianford.com. A free kick here for the Seawolves. Did you catch the substitute, Keith? I didn't. I did not. Winter going up over the top was whistled for the foul. Free kick played long and handled easily by the goalkeeper Thomas. He'll roll it out, and there's your substitute. This is number 26. Kevin Cobby Kevin just Cobby. joined the side, played with Brampton East in British Columbia. And he's in the defense there somewhere. I had my guess. I think he... 
Oh, I'm not sure. We'll see where he's slotted in, who has, whose name we don't call for a while, but Cobby into the match now. Clement plays this one away. And Locken has a chance again. He's been very active here in this second half. Locken, three goals and time for, tied for the team lead with two assists. He's played in all six matches and has those five points. Very active, especially here in the second half. And, of course, the equalizing goal for the Whitecaps in the 74th minute. This ball is knocked out of play over the touchline by Suazo. It'll be a throw-in for the uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. We're in the 82nd minute here at Edmonds Stadium, a 2-2 match. North Sound had their first lead at home on the season but couldn't hold on to it. The equalizer by Locken about eight minutes ago. And we play here at 2-2 on a clear evening in Edmonds. Thanks to everybody for joining us here this evening. Nathan Murphy, Keith Neely, glad to have you with us. Farrenhorst with the ball near the midfield stripe on the right side. Tries to get it forward, but can't quite do so. And a, a whistle now and a foul is going to go against Vancouver. So North, North Sound Seawolves will get another opportunity. Plavsik has entered the game now for Vancouver. Sasa Plavsik plays at the University of Fraser Valley in British Columbia, 5'10", 165 pounds. He's entered in the midfield, and he committed that foul. But the free kick is handled easily by Thomas, and the ball free in the midfield again. Lots of loose play in the midfield by both sides in the waning stages of these match. Tired legs maybe, Keith? Could be. It could be, and you're going to have to take those legs and push them into the offense. You're going to have to get on the attack, throw an extra man forward here because, as we mentioned, a draw isn't enough. You're going to have to get three points, and at this point in time, the Seawolves are going to have to take a, a little bit of a chance. If it means giving up a little bit more on the counter, uh, you're going to have to take the opportunity to attack. Here's Long ball here for Hammond. Can he keep it in? He can. He's got... In the middle, he's got opportunities, but Griffin stops his run. He had it, and he slowed up. I think he was expecting a rebound, and the ball goes out for a corner, but it could have been so much more. You can see the body language of, of Griffin right there. He knew what he did, and, and yet he's going to take his chance now on the corner on the set piece and see if he can't actually make good on the lack of, of effort on that crossing play. I'm going to go back to the defender, Suazo, who made a really nice play in the corner of his own end to keep that ball in play and start that attack. The corner comes in and getting a foot on it, but not quite enough, is Hammond, and it goes out for a goal kick, and we'll have another substitution. But I like the way that uh, North Sound's attacking right now, and again, you're going to have to start throwing bodies at the goal. You're going to have to start running people forward. You're going to have to stay, start taking some little bit of some chances as far as offsides goes and uh, start running men into the corner, start running men down the, the uh, middle of the field and when you can get those opportunities on crosses and through balls, you're going to have to put them in the back of the net. Yes, yeah, seen Essa leaves the game for the Whitecaps and entering is number two, Colton O'Neill. He plays with the Magnuson Ford Club in Canada. In the regular in the uh, winter season, excuse me, as a forward-looking ball here, looking for Durant, who's got the who's got two goals for the SeaWolves coming into the match. It was a little bit too far, and it bounces to Thomas, who clears it away. <laughs> Loose ball in the midfield again. Durant, nice try, but he can't quite find Braxton, and it will go out for a goal kick. We're in the 86th minute, just over five minutes remaining. In regular time, there will be a little bit of stoppage time added on here. We had the injury to Abdullah. We had the injury to Thomas. Both of those took some time, three or four minutes maybe. But as we've mentioned, no board here, so they, they will not tell us. We'll have to just wait and see. The corner taken by Hamer comes in, and it bounces out onto the right side where it's played there by Bartels, the defender, earns another corner kick. Good work by the defender getting up. Seawolves pushing people forward. I like to see this. You're playing like you're down a goal, not knotted at two. As they should be. They need the three points. Nobody is fewer than 15 yards into the Vancouver half right now, and that's just Suazo. Everyone else is within 30 yards of goal. 
As another corner, this one will be taken by Hammond. Comes in low and it's cleared away by Clement. It'll go over the touch line. Maybe it won't. It'll stay in place. Suazo touches it up for Hamer. It does go out of play, and it will be a throw-in for the Whitecaps. That's unfortunate. You had everybody forward. You had the possession you needed right there. Corner ball just a little low, not quite as lofty, and it gives you more opportunity. Neither team having a lot of success with the corner kicks today, except, of course, for the first goal as an opportunity here. Well played by the goalkeeper, Rogers, who knocked it up into the air, preventing the opportunity for Plovsic. But Vancouver retains the ball, and a shot will go over the bar by Juti, and for a goal kick. Rogers had to come out, cut down that angle, and was able to make the decision early enough in that attack to get out there to do it. He hesitates even a little bit, and all you have to do is just pump it right up over the top, and it's a goal. Nice job by Rogers to make the decision when he did. And the touch was right. It just wasn't quite enough. Fans, are you a citizen of USL Nation? Follow all the action on the web's most exciting soccer social media platform. Visit uslnation.com today. And we're glad you've joined us here on uslnation.com and seawolvesfc.com. Nathan Murphy, Keith Neely alongside as we play in the final five minutes of the 90. Two and a half minutes left in regulation time. A 2-2 match and we have a whistle. And the referee looks very unhappy about something. He's calling, and he's going to issue a yellow card. A booking on somebody over there, and I'm not sure who he showed the card to. This is the Frenchman, I do, who gets the caution. I'm not certain what it's for, but he goes into the book in the 88th minute. Second. And there was no question about it. <laughs> referee Ben Oakley did, went right over to a dude and showed him the card. <coughs> There's an opportunity in toward the net. And then almost a handball, and it will be into the arms of Rodgers. It went out of play. It'll be a goal kick. We're in the 89th minute now here in Edmonds. Every possession becoming more and more important for both of these clubs. Knotted at two now inside a minute and a half left in the 90. And vital, as we've been saying for the last few minutes, for North Sound to really push forward. A draw doesn't do them a whole lot of good, and certainly they are pushing players forward as an opportunity here for Griffin but the shot is blocked by the feet of Clement and it bounces out onto the wing and Vancouver will control up the wing and now into the center for Juti tries to play the long ball onside is O'Neill he holds up play slips it out onto the left wing now this is Plovzik back into the center turning shot blocked down there by um, Suazo and a long ball now for Hammond on onside. the right side. He is offside. No, I say offside now. Oh, no, it went out of play. He was onside. I think he was onside. He timed that very, very well. And again, you're going to have to start taking some chances there. And that's what you need to do. But the ball couldn't be kept in play. Good attempt by Hammond, but it goes for nothing. The throw in comes to Locken. It's contested there at an opportunity. Can't get a hold of it. Griffin chases the ball down. He can't get a hold of it. And now back it goes into the north sound end. Into the 90th minute we go. You've got dwindling opportunities here, and North Sound Seawolves trying everything they can to get the ball downfield quickly and at least get two or three men thrown at the keeper. Whether or not they succeed in getting a goal here, though, you have to love the effort as we approach, and now we will cross the 90-minute mark. We've played all 90 into stoppage time here in Edmonds. 2-2 is the score. A goal in each half by both clubs. Both sides want this win and are looking for more. A shot from Vancouver off the, the bar, bar and it bounces. Cleared away by Suazo. No goal, but it comes back. Still opportunity for Locken. Holy smoke, was that an opportunity gone down? Hundal well played by, is this, it is not Thomas, who is this? Well played by the North Sound defense anyway, and it will be a free kick earned there. And Thomas will take it. North Sound Seawolves fan with a collective sigh as that hits the crossbar. Goes straight down and out. Well cleared after that by Suazo, but frightening moments in extra time. As another opportunity here for Vancouver, this is Fahrenhorst. Plays it long, but there's nobody there. Out to chase it is Rogers. I think he'll let it go across the line. He will, and it's a goal kick. Rogers hustling 
trying to get these last few opportunities. We've played one extra minute. I would guess two or three more on top of that after the injuries and a couple of goals. Yeah, as Abdallah went down for a good minute and a half there before they could get him off. Of course, Thomas, the goalkeeper, after the goal, was on the turf for a moment. So I but think you're right. At least four minutes would be my guess. Only the referee, Oakley, knows at this point. Fahrenhorst on the ball. Into the center. This is Juti. Slides it ahead. Has a man. Turning with it ahead. Now for Pavlik. His shot is blocked. And it kind of dribbles weakly toward the right post where Rogers pounces on it. And once again, he'll look to go the other way. Seawolves having trouble getting it past midfield at this point. Miscommunication there between Griffin and Durant. Nobody gets ahead on it, but it will be a throw-in for the Seawolves. Hammond will go and get it. Just about two minutes gone here in extra time. Score. Tripped up on the left side is Hammond. And here earns a dangerous free kick. Just outside the area on the right side, maybe 20 yards from goal. Outside the 18, but below the top of the box. And the Seawolves will push everybody forward now. And this is where marking is so crucial on the defense for Vancouver. You cannot have a letdown or a lapse where you'll lose a man in your peripheral. The assistant resets the wall. Referee sets the wall, and now the whistle is given. The cross comes in, and it's headed away neatly by Juti, but it comes back out. A shot well saved by Thomas from distance. Did not let his eyes off the ball for a second, even on the rebound. Long ball the other way now, and it'll be handled by Rogers. We're approaching three minutes gone by in added time. Griffin will fight for this one. It'll go over his head. Durant will fight now on the bounce. Farron Horse and Griffin... Two strong bodies, and a little bit I of think a there may be some here. extracurricular activity going down underneath between those two, Griffin and Farron Horse. This is bossy he's getting into it with. They've been bumping into each other all game. The referee gets between them, settles it down. Looks like nothing additional. Continue the referee. to play. What do we have here? The uh, goalkeeper, Thomas, is upset about something. I think he wants the uh, game over. I think he's, and again, the referee, time is over. The referee is backing out to talk to his assistant now. I think they're discussing what, if any, uh, discipline should be leveled against either Bossy or Braxton Griffin. He, the assistant referee was watching that while the referee started to move up with play. We'll see if any plastic will be shown. The... Uh, Junior assistant, uh, senior assistant referee, excuse me, on that side of the field, Tony Johnson. Ben Oakley is the referee. We've had four extra minutes played now, and he is going to go to his front pocket. So now it's just a question of who. Or Griffin's both of being them. called over. So Braxton Griffin, Griffin will go in with a caution. Brixton. Will he be the only one? Referee. Seeming to indicate it's for a, a little kick or a trip. And yes, it does appear that that's the only thing that's going to happen right now is another little scuffle between now Zach Hamer and Bobby Juti. This is unfortunate for as, as well played as both of these halves have been to have it slow down into a kind of a pushing and shoving match at the extra time. I wonder how much further we'll go. The clock says we've gone five minutes past the 90 now, but we haven't done anything for the last 90 seconds at least. It'll be interesting to see. continuing to not do anything. How much further we'll go. We are going to have a drop ball, it appears. Some discussion about how this is going to work between a few different players. These teams do meet again at the close of the season. season. Out uh, J July 17th right here at Edmond Stadium. So they will square off one more time right here and depending on the outcome of this game if one were to get a late goal that could really come down to that last game the drop ball is knocked by Durant out of play and to the white caps as we're back to active play here long ball played forward looking for O'Neal <laughs> Plavzik on the ball now it's picked up by Hundal ahead for it and an opportunity and a goal a winning goal for the white caps it has to be Unbelievable the finish here. Winter gets the goal, 
that's got to be the winner and a heartbreaking outcome for the, for the North Sound Seawolves. Absolutely unbelievable. And that pretty much wraps it up, and, and he's quick like lightning. You can't let your guard down. We talked about mistakes, and I think the little scuffle out here uh, that happened on the attacking side for the Seawolves might have let the guard down of the Seawolves defense, and just like that, it's 3-2. Long ball was played ahead for Plavsic. He controlled it, slipped it out on the white right side for Winter, and Winter with a marvelous finish from about 15 yards away into the upper corner, beating Rodgers. Really you, unfortunate. You just hope that a, a loss like this doesn't carry past this game. You've got to have such a short memory in a short season, and if this one kind of gets into the players as an opportunity lost that they continue to dwell on, that might be your season. Coming up on seven minutes gone by in the extra added time here. Still no whistle from the referee Oakley. And a throw in. We've got some delay going on. And it looks like Coach Ed Moore has been dismissed by the referee. Ed Moore is being sent off of the bench by referee Ben Oakley. I don't know what the uh, discussion is about, but Ed Moore looks very upset, and he's being instructed to leave the technical area. Well, and again, a, with a, such a masterfully played game, knotted at two goals at the end of regulation time, and then to have it all just kind of cascade into a pushing match, and, and it's, it's really unfortunate. A, a really well-played game for so long today. And it's just unraveling for the Seawolves here in the last few minutes. Ed Moore still yelling back at the referee as he jogs down and he'll go behind the goal and come over toward us. And we're still waiting to resume play here. And it will be a Whitecaps throw in. The ball held up nicely there by Plavsic. And a foul given, a free kick. We've played eight minutes now, or we've gone eight minutes. We haven't played for all of that time, but eight minutes are gone in added time. And you'd think you'd be all be about done here. There's a, a bit of a heavy push. They say continue. A throw in to the Whitecaps. Very upset is the midfielder Idude here. The referee wants to hear none of it, gestures him away, and it will be another throw in. Taking his time with the ball, the Whitecaps midfielder throws it forward, and that will do it. The final whistle comes, a 3-2 to two loss for the Seawolves, an absolutely heartbreaking result, Keith. Absolutely heartbreaking. You know, you had it, especially when you go up 2-1 to one late in the first half, and then kind of things came unraveled, and, and, and it makes you wonder, again, how this is going to affect the team, not just today. Of course, you're going to go home tonight, and you're going to feel down about the outcome but you cannot let this haunt you you can't go on next week when you play victoria up at victoria you you have to let it go you have to come back and you've got to get three Those it's going to three points are so important it's going to be interesting to see how they react there's a different couple different ways this could happen you can react with just despair give up you can react with anger this is a frustrating result the team could come out and play with a lot of fire that's going to that's gonna determine the rest of the season is how they respond to this. Just a heartbreaking loss. Winter with the game-winning goal in stoppage time as the Seawolves come up short here 3-2. to two. Fans will take this opportunity to tell you that the Seawolves love to offer a unique food vendor partnership here at the games. If you enjoy good barbecue, then come out to a match and enjoy the mouth-watering offerings from the Celtic Cowboy Barbecue. They're located in Edmonds. There's nothing better than good soccer and wonderful barbecue. I had the Celtic Cowboy uh, last time we were here on my way down to do the MLS match for the day. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful food. The next match for the Seawolves will be a week from today at Victoria. And then our next uh, match here for Nathan and I on the USL Nation will be June 21st against that same Victoria club here at home the home field of the North Sound Seawolves. That's a 7.30 kickoff on Friday, June 21st. We hope you'll join us. And, uh, wow, it's just tough. You kind of have to uh, take a deep breath, a step back, and almost replay that last two minutes of 
of the game to understand uh, where we're at right now. It just doesn't even seem real. There's a, a very clear break when that scuffle broke out with Griffin and, and the, the Seawolves got so upset about what the restart would be. They were expecting a free kick. and It ends up a booking and off you go to the races. And literally 30 seconds after that restart, the ball's in the back of the net and, and that's all that happened. It's, it's a frustrating outcome, but that's how it goes in this league. You've got to accept it. And, and as we're saying, how they respond to it is going to determine what will happen. Fans, we'd like to take an opportunity to welcome all Swedish Edmonds employees, those who are watching the broadcast with us here tonight, and those who came out to the match. The Seawolves are glad to partner with Swedish Edmonds, and we really appreciate the health care services they provide to our community. Several months ago, Swedish Institute Medical Oncology at Edmonds opened and began offering chemotherapy and infusion services. And there will be more good news about expanded services coming later this year. To learn what's new, visit Swedish.org slash Edmonds. Swedish.org slash Edmonds. The North Sound Seawolves fall to 0-5-1 on the season. The Vancouver Whitecaps, they move to 4-3-0 on the season. And they will move up in the table, uh, eclipsing two teams. They move past the Sounders FCU 23 team and the Victoria Highlanders to take the number two spot in the Northwest Division. Of course, the North Sound Seawolves still toward the bottom of the table, an opportunity lost today, but it uh, is certainly not over yet. We're not quite to the halfway mark in the season. One more game marks game number seven of a 16-game season. And we would certainly hope that uh, things would change just a little bit. We'd like to welcome in Nick Hamer for uh, our player of the match for the Sounders, uh, or excuse me, the uh, North Sound Seawolves. And Nick, a, a very frustrating outcome. It has to be on all levels. And it all came in the last uh, minute and a half of stoppage. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, both teams fought very hard. It was tough for us at the end there. Uh, I think we battled uh, most of the game, and I felt like we were the, the better team for most of the game because we were fighting hard and getting stuck in. It was just unfortunate at the end there where everyone's just getting, you know, rowdy and everyone's getting into it, trying to score that last goal because it tied 2-2 at the time. So everyone's going to get really intense just trying to go for that last goal. Nick, tell me what happened with the confrontation between Brax and uh, Tyler Bossy. Uh, I mean, it looked like Brax just, I don't know, he was just trying to back him down a little bit. And, uh, I, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I was kind of back there, but it looked like maybe they got in a little tussle, maybe get a little shove on the back. So, I mean, Brax is a big dude, so he's not going to take that from him lightly. So, I mean, he got it in his face. I mean, it's not the best way to handle it, but, I mean, it's just, it's just how it went. Talk about your goal, Nick, a, a nice cross from your teammate Hammond, and, and uh, tell, us, tell us about your finish. Uh, I, I mean, it was, it was a great play to build up. You know, it was a lot of one-touch passing going from side to side. And then we get Zach Hammond uh, on the through ball over the top. And, uh, I mean, I didn't, uh, both their guys were looking at the ball, their defenders, and they didn't see me coming in. And the last, just that last run in between, Zach played a great ball to me. And I just had to just outstretch the goalie a little bit and just luckily went in for me. A new assignment here for you tonight. You're bumping up into the midfield. Uh, you're playing with your brother there, your teammates out at Gonzaga. What's that yeah. like to share the midfield with him? Oh, it's great. Uh, we've always played together. We, we grew up together. We always on the same club team. Uh, me and Zach played uh, high school in the center mid as well. And so we're, I mean, we're brothers. We played together our whole lives. So we kind of have that connection where we kind of know where each other's going to be all the time. It's really nice. I love it. It didn't look like you were at all uncomfortable at any point in the game. I mean, at, at times it, we called you the wheelhouse. I mean, it seemed like the ball came through. It was going to go to Nick Hamer. And from there, we were going to distribute. For a guy that's not used to doing that in the midfield, did that just come naturally? Did that feel just very comfortable to you? Uh, I mean, I've always been pretty comfortable on the ball. Uh, for Gonzaga, I actually play in the center mid. Okay. So I know the position really well, and I just I like to find those gaps where the defender's not really looking at me. You know, there's just that space in between the back four and the midfielders, just that little pocket. And uh, uh, it works out really well because the defenders don't really see me most of the time because I'm a little shorter. So, you know, I've got that going for me. But, yeah, I love, I love playing that position. I'm always really comfortable in there, and I always look for the challenge. Nick, uh, you drew with Victoria last time you played him. You get them again next week. What does that opportunity say to you guys? What do you need to do? Uh, again, it's the same thing we, have, we do in every game. We've got to come out and we've got to fight hard. I mean, every game's going to be a battle, and since we're, we're the team at the bottom, we have nothing to lose now. So we've got to just prove to ourselves and the rest of the league that we're here to play and we're not going to go anywhere.
Nick Hamer from a f one zag to another. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Good luck next week. Nick Hamer, the captain, the goal scorer tonight, and we're pleased now to welcome uh, head coach Ed Moore. Ed, a, a frustrating last couple of minutes on top of what was a really well-played match. Yep, definitely. I mean, it, it kind of boiled a little bit over in the last little bit. Yeah. Um, both teams were trying to go after the win. Both teams were had been battling for 90 minutes. So I really think that um, it just, you know, it, it, the referee, I felt, got to let it get a little bit out of control. But I felt like it was just a good, clean battle where two teams that really wanted to get three points just going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh, what passed between you and the referee there at the end? Well, I just, I mean, I think the referee was just, had a terrible he was consistently terrible all night and I feel like both coaches will write down the same thing on the post match report so I was trying to stick up for my players I mean I, I'm asking them to fight for 90 minutes I'm asking them to push and we're never going to sit back and play for a draw so I've asked them to push on and fight and I'm the same way I'm not going to settle for time wasting and them you know anything like that so I just felt like I had to step up for my teammate or step up for my team and battle for our players so one of the uh, things that we were talking pregame to your assistant coach, Alex, and he was talking about how one of the most positive things to come of the season so far was a, a, a sense of family. And that fighting on toward the, the, the last two minutes uh, certainly play into that. With a loss today, uh, you're going to have to dig deep because now you're, you're, you're fighting uphill battle the entire way. Uh, how much of that family can you rely on is that... Uh, is that just uh, with all the new players coming in, is that something that you know you can go back to time and time again? I think so. I mean, I think for the, for the most part, we have a very competitive and um, just a good group of guys that want to be here and want to do their best no matter when or where they're asked to step on the field. They all have that from within. They really want to battle and, and play their best. So I don't think we have to dig too much deeper. I think we're, you're seeing a team that's right on the edge. It's right on the cusp. You know, I think we, we battled, and I thought we gave more than we took with the Sounders on Wednesday. I think you look tonight, like Nick alluded to, I think for large stretches we had them pinned back, and I thought we created some good chances. So I think they'll come out and continue to do what we're asking them to do. Um, I think they are going to have to make sure they dig deep and stay focused, but I think they have it within them. I think it's a good, good enough group of guys that they'll continue to battle. So. Coach, a lot of opportunities in the offensive third, particularly in the first 20 minutes of the match. What do you need to do to translate those into more goals? Yeah, that's that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, if you know the answer, you, maybe you can tell me. <laughs> um, but you know, that's what we talked to these guys about on um, the last couple games, especially is really minimizing our mistakes in the back, which unfortunately we've we've shot ourselves in the foot a little bit the last couple games, more so what we've done to ourselves than other teams, maybe opening us up. But and then conversely on the on the attacking end, I think we all I can do is stay with them and, and applaud them because we've created some really good chances. I mean, even back to Wednesday night, we created a penalty kick, a shot that the goalie had to say I mean, just made a big time reaction save on. We had another one that was a narrow miss. So I, all in all, I just can't ask for too much more as a coach. I mean, these guys are battling. Not only are we creating opportunities, but we're staying pretty organized. So we just it's the little things that come back in this game that will come back and kill you. So. You got a point on the island last time. What do you need to do against Victoria this week? Uh, more of the same tonight. I mean, show that show that battling spirit. Um, really stay organized. And we're still waiting for the first game where we put a 90-minute stretch together. I mean, you've seen it here tonight, bits, spells. I mean, our first, that, that goal that we scored was off some of the best soccer I've seen from any and team. We, and we mentioned that, the fact that you were so, pass, touch pass here, short pass there. The possession was fully in control yep. from midfield all the way through to the final yep. into the back of the net. And it was beautiful. It was a, it was a really... Uh, a goal that everyone just kind of took a gasp at, and, and yep. it was it was very nicely and, done. And they should have because it was a special goal. And that, but that's stuff that comes out of these guys and the work they do in training. I mean, it's no accident. What we work on is speed of play, that one and two touch. And so you saw it tonight with the movement. And it just so happens tonight it um, it ended with us putting one in the back of the net. But I just think more of the same. I think it's as a coach, sometimes you have a tendency to panic and you want to change nine different things because you can't quite find that one thing. But for us, I'm just going to tell these guys the same thing I'm thinking is let's stay the course and just ratchet it, get it a little bit tighter because I don't think we're dead in the water. I think we're right there. We just continue to need to – we just – continue to need to limit the mistakes and really capitalize on our opportunities. That's the main thing. Coach, best of luck going forward. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks for everything. Coach Ed Moore, we appreciate his time, and uh, Captain Nick Hamer for coming up and joining us.
We'll take a few minutes here to remind you of our sponsors. We really appreciate them. Brian Ford, as always, our presenting sponsor here on uslnation.com. Brian Ford offers the best deal on every car every day. Their non-commissioned sales staff is committed to providing you with a buying experience that can't be matched, all backed by a 72-hour return policy. Brian Ford, easy, clear, and one low price. Visit them online at brianford.com. Dot com. North Sound Seawolves Soccer is brought, broadcast is sponsored by Waterfront Coffee Company, conveniently, conveniently located at 101 Main Street next to the Edmonds Ferry Terminal and Brackett's Landing Beach. Waterfront Coffee Company features, features Italian-style coffee and pastries, local organic lunch items, including panini, soup, and piroshki, plus everyone's favorite, Snoqualmie ice cream. Visit them online at waterfrontcoffeeco.com. And North Sound Seawolves Soccer is presented by the My Neighborhood News Network, South Snohomish County's online gathering place. Visit My Edmonds News, MLT News, and LinwoodToday.com for news, sports, and events about your community. See what your neighbors are talking about with the My Neighborhood News Network. Thanks for being with us on this North Sound Seawolves USLNation.com broadcast. Be sure you join us again for our next home broadcast on Friday June 21st, the Seawolves meet the Victoria Highlanders right here at Edmonds District Stadium. Thanks again. Well, you mentioned them. Our presenting sponsor, Brian Ford and Everett, and our sponsors, Waterfront Coffee Company, located next to the Edmonds Ferry Terminal. And uh, the final score, not ones that Seawolves fans necessarily enjoy, but a very fun game to watch from the broadcast booth, a 3-2 uh, win by the Vancouver Whitecaps tonight. Thoroughly entertaining match, Keith. It had a little bit of snarl. It had some fantastic passing play. It had some physical play. A couple of brilliant goals by both teams. And, uh, you know, it's not the result the Seawolves wanted, but a, a winner in extra time is always exciting. Uh, uh, the fans certainly got their money's worth tonight. We'd like to take a moment to thank uh, the folks behind the scenes here on the broadcast, Mike Allende, the communications Specialist with the Seawolves, thank him for his contributions. We couldn't do it without him. Todd Elvig, <coughs> behind the uh, camera, thank you for your good work. And, of course, Teresa Whipple for putting all of this together. We appreciate everything that she does. Absolutely do. So, once again, please join us on Friday, June 21st, and we'll bring another one to you right here on uslnation.com. I'm Keith Neely saying so long, along with my broadcast partner, Nathan Murphy. Uh, please come back and join us again. One thing I'd like to add, if you'd like to go back and listen to any of the Seawolves broadcast, the On Demand is available for you on uslnation.com. Make sure you check that out. Again, 3-2 the final here at Edmond Stadium. We'll say good night. The victors, the Vancouver Whitecaps over the North Sound Seawolves. Good night, everybody.